Hello everyone, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art. I welcome you to another animal painting tutorial for stress relief. To start my handmade Christmas videos off right, we will be painting this Highland Cow Christmas ornament. Jumping right into a rough sketch, I am going to provide all the reference photos and even a traceable printout below in case you don't want to draw, but if you want to work on your drawing skills with us, we're going to get started right now with a rough draft. Also, if you enjoy creating animal art and you want to reduce some stress this Christmas, I've created an online animal art masterclass for creatives of all levels, learning all different kinds of mediums, creating things like pets and wildlife, all at your convenience and starting at just $10 a month. So if that's something you're interested in, I have all the links to that below, as well as all the materials and reference photos and traceables for this tutorial. Whenever I am drawing an animal, I start with the basic shapes that I see within the image. And I'm going to start by making a circle right in the middle of the log wood slice. I don't know how I want to call that wood slice. And then I branch out to make the body. And you want this big enough so you don't have so much empty space in the background. If you make the head too small or you make the body too small, it you just have all this space to make the snow. And so make this quite a bit big so that it takes up majority of the ornament. And you also want to give yourself enough room to create those ears and the horns. Now for the horns, I'm just going to start by creating lines just in just placing down lines so that I can then outline them to create the width of the horns. If you notice on the cow's head that it peaks at the top and then comes down, it's not just a straight flat line between both horns. I'm going to further define the left ear because it kind of comes down and connects with the face. I'm going to do that on both sides, both ears. I'm now going to outline the horns, like I had said, just making sure there's an even width between both sides of that line that we created. And it kind of has, it goes out to an angle and then comes up to a point. I'm going to create a rough circle at the bottom of the snout, followed by two nostrils. And remember, it's kind of rounded straight at the bottom. I'm going to make two nostrils closer to the top of the snout and then at the very bottom plane where that plane is at the bottom of the ears, I'm going to create two eyes symmetrical two from one another. And there you go. That is our rough draft completed. Now we're going to move on to our painting. All right. So I've got all my colors out. I have all my brushes out. I have a couple extra in case I need them. And now we're going to get started with the background and I'm using my small flat brush. With my flat brush, I'm going to mix the colors light blue and phalo cyan and blue. And I want this to be a medium blue. So not too dark, not too light. Phalo cyan and blue is very dark. So I'm going to definitely use a good amount of my light blue. Make sure your brush is damp, but not sopping wet. And we're just going to paint around our sketch or traceable, whichever one you decided to go with. And I always say it's better to get closer to the outline than have an outline around the sketch. Make enough of this color you'll notice that wood is very absorbent and it'll take on a lot of that color. So it does very well with paint. It's just like paper. I mean, it's, it does very well, but I definitely had to mix up some more of this color so that I could cover most of it. Now we're going to keep the bottom part dark and it's going to progressively transition to a lighter blue at the top. So as I'm working with my paint being still wet, I'm going to add in light blue straight to my wood slice. And if I keep saying canvas, you know what I'm saying. I, I always want to say canvas, but we are working on wood. And 
you can kind of dab around. You don't have to make sure that, I mean, unless you want it to, you don't have to make sure that that gradient is perfectly blended. You can just kind of dab. And so I'll dab some of that light blue in with where the darker areas are. And then I'll take straight light blue and I'll add that to the top. Sometimes you'll need to mix in the phthalo sign in blue again so that it kind of allows that gradient to be a bit more even but you don't have to kind of go overboard with it and make sure it's super smooth. And I want to make sure that my brush is relatively damp. It can be really dry. Like I said, it's very absorbent, but you don't want it too wet where it's then bleeding and, and having this paint sop into your sketch. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna be creating little white dots for snow over top of this, but just to create that depth and to look really like a, a winter wonderland, we're just kind of dabbing that paint into the medium to dark blue. With my raw umber, it's not gonna be with my dark blue. I decided to make it with my brown. We're gonna lay down the darkest areas of this painting, which are the nostrils, around the snout, the eyes, under ears, and areas on the horn. So using my detail brush, I'm just gonna create those lines as well as paint in some areas that are the darkest. So where the hair kind of curls around the snout, I'm gonna outline that. I'm also gonna create a little chin that we didn't do when we were sketching. And then I'm gonna create the shadow underneath the jaw and the ear, as well as create just very, uh, this is kind of rough because we're just placing down some of the shadows and some of the outlines. So that goes for the line on the snout and the nostrils. The eyes are kind of hard to see because of all the hair coming, um, coming over top. And so the placement of the eyes we can fix later on. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. I decided just to fill in the horns and then have that outline later on when we layer the lighter colors over top. So just fill in and create the horns, define them so that they're both symmetrical with your detail brush. And then over later on, we're gonna go paint over the top of that.
Next, I'm gonna mix raw sienna with Indian yellow. Everything on the face and the body that we haven't touched with paint, except for the snout, is gonna be with this color. There always has to be a darker base coat underneath the fur that we paint over top. And it's a lot easier to create little strands of fur over top this than having to go in between each little strand later on. Next, I'm gonna mix phthalo cyan and blue with titanium white. Still using my detail brush, I'm gonna use this color for the outside of the nose. And if you watch me, I'll show you what I mean by that. Now into that color that we just mixed, I'm gonna add light blue and titanium white to make a very light blue for the center of the snout. Now, if you need to touch up the mouth and the nostrils like I did, 
that is just fine. I'm using my raw umber again and I'm gonna to touch that up right now. Next, I'm gonna mix rose red with titanium white and that's gonna be the medium tones beneath the chin. Now you want your brush to be thin, not full and thick with paint. You want it to kind of be damp and thin with paint so that we can create those fur-like strands, those curly strands for the fur. Now if this brush, your detail brush is too large and you just wanna get more tiny, thin fur strands, you can always move to a micro detail brush if you have it. I use a micro detail brush for most of the animals that I paint. I wasn't really thinking and I really went through all my brushes before I got to my micro detail brush. So whichever brush you're more comfortable with, use that. Next color we're gonna mix is simply yellow into the pink mixture that we uh, just mixed. So don't waste any paint, just simply add a good amount of yellow and we're gonna create that for the next layer. And finally, I moved to the right brush and I just don't know why sometimes it just takes so long to learn from my mistakes. Eventually one day I will learn. So now I'm just layering curly hair strands over top the forehead and I want this to be lighter because it's catching most of the sun and I'm just gonna curl those strands around the eyes. Really refer back to your reference photo as to the direction that the hair is moving in on the face. So around the snout, it just kind of hugs. It's just really clinging to the sides. They're short little hairs, longer at the forehead, but then shorter around the snout. And the direction that they go is they're, they're moving forward, they're moving down, and they're also just hugging the snout. Make sure you don't leave any outline or gap at the forehead where you're creating that fur. I was almost tempted to do that, but you want to get to the very tippy top so you don't have any of that brown showing through at the top. And we will be covering this with little snowflakes, but there is so much hair on the top of that cow's forehead that, that you really want to show that with all the fur that you layer. Next color is simply adding titanium white and some raw sienna into the color that we previously mixed. In the reference photo, if you look at beneath the ears, there is a beautiful highlight. The sun is just shining behind the cow. And so we're gonna create a much lighter color that's still similar to the other hair. And we're gonna put that underneath the ears.
I'm also going to place that over top on the back because that's also an area getting a lot of sun exposure. also going to place this color around the snout, on the top of the snout, all around it, and by the jaw. Still mixing in my colors into the previous color that we mixed, I'm going to add titanium white, Indian yellow, and the regular yellow to create an even lighter color to apply to the hair strands. With this color, I'm going to outline previous strands that we made as well as add more making sure to definitely get to the very tippy top of that forehead. Really capture the curliness and the movement of the hair by just making them go in all different directions. They're all gonna be long and curly. It took me a little while to understand exactly what color I was trying to get here. So bear with me. I'm trying to create a darker orange. So don't add too much red like I did. You want to mix Indian yellow, yellow, and your red to create this dark orange to put as more fur layers. I wanted to add a bit more color. We had too much yellow. So if you just watch my placement, I'm going to add this orange in areas that are getting a bit more shade. Stand. 
I'm gonna add this orange to my horns. I wanna just very carefully create a line that goes on the bottom of both horns. Next, I'm going to use straight raw umber and I'm both going to redefine the areas that I painted previously in the first steps when we applied our dark tones. But I'm also going to create more of those shadows around the snout and underneath where those hairs kind of poke out over top the nose, I'm going to create that shadow, that outline. And I'm also going to make sure that the nostrils are symmetrical, so they're both equal in spacing and sizing and placement. We're gonna be okay. And I'm also going to create a very thin, skinny line in the dead center of the nose. Although I get very close, I'm not going to cover the entire top of the nose. It's just going to be the thinnest and skinniest at the very top of the nose, but not touching. All right, guys, so this is the last color that we mix before applying the snowflakes. So I'm mixing Indian yellow with lots of titanium white. And I do mean a lot because we still want to make this look have a yellowish uh, tint, but then making it the brightest layer of the fur. And so like we did before, I'm just going to layer the first strands over top the previous layers that we added, making sure to definitely apply this in the areas that are getting the most light exposure. And I'm also just to give it a little bit of abstract look, I'm carrying it over the into the blue at the very top of the, the head. You can kind of see that I went over and I went into the blue part. So if you want to add some more wispy hairs, you just want to have things looking like it's moving and flowing, get a little creative with this. It doesn't have to be perfect. So now we are finally going to add our snowflakes. Really simple. I'm just making sure I have a damp micro brush and I'm just going to create little circles, little dabs of paint all over the forehead, the horns. It's going to fall on the nose of the cow. It looks more realistic when there's clumps of snowflakes in some areas and then more scattered in others. 
And so if you kind of think of where the snow's gonna hit a cow, it's gonna be at the very top of the head. It's not so much gonna be by the eyes, it's gonna be more by the snout and on the very top of the back, on the tips of the ears. So you just think like, when, as the snow is falling from the sky, where is it gonna touch first? And so a lot of the areas that we added our highlights to, that's where the snowflakes are gonna sit. And then in the background, if it's closer up, those snowflakes are gonna be bigger. And if it's further away, those snowflakes are gonna be much tinier. And so that'll depend on how much pressure you apply to your brush. And so just a little tip, if you apply more pressure to your brush, you're gonna create a bigger, more likely thicker snowflake. So guys, as we close and finish up our painting, I hope you have a wonderful time. Enjoy yourself adding these snowflakes and I look forward to giving you more tutorials on making Christmas gifts this year. So stay tuned for that. They're gonna come up very soon. Bye.